talk series on the Springer correspondence. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, and, and uh, thanks to the, the organizers for, for asking me to speak here. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I'm going to talk about the, the Springer correspondence. Um, this, uh, um, this is something which uh, goes back, I mean, its origins were in, were in the mid-1970s, so it's, um, you know, uh, well, it's, it, it, you know, some parts of this are, are, are quite old. Um, the, the plan, roughly, um, I mean, it might not be exactly like this, is that uh, today I'll, I'll talk about sort of um, uh, the, so, so, some bit of background and, um, and the, the, uh, the thing which uh, Springer himself did, which, which uh, what am I called, the, the ordinary Springer correspondence. Um, day two is going to be the, the generalized Springer correspondence. And uh, day three is some uh, uh, you know, rather modern stuff uh, where you take coefficients in, in, in positive characteristic. And um, um, I think I'm going to start off today and probably part of tomorrow uh, working in, in, in the group setting. Um, and then, uh, I, I, I mean, I'll m m maybe sometime t t tomorrow I'll, um, I, I mean, there are a lot of similarities between, between the group setting and the Lie algebra setting. Um, I mean, there are lots and lots of arguments that, that are really I I identical in, in, in both cases. Um, but rather than switching back and forth or, or rather than, you know, writing things twice, I'll, 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 I'll hold off on, on discussing the Lie algebra. Uh, setting until tomorrow. Um, and, um, well, yeah, uh, yeah, and I guess um, I I implicit in day, day three being modular is that, is that the first two days are, are, are characteristic zero. Okay. Um, so here's the, here's the, well, here, here's some, some just general notation. Um, so G is going to be a, uh, a, a connected reductive uh, group over, over C. Um, so sometime tomorrow, I, I, I might change this a, a, a bit. But, but for now, it, it's going to be a complex reductive group. And inside there, let's pick a Borel subgroup um, B. And then um, um, and then uh, curly B. Is uh, is the flag variety, um, or the 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 variety of Borel subgroups, and then um, uh, curly B with a subscript. So the subscript is typically going to be an, an well. The subscript is, is is an element of G, uh, and this is a this is a Springer fiber. Um, so this morning in the first talk we heard the term affine Springer fiber. So this is this is related. Um, well, well, we'll see more about it l l later on. Um, the, the definition is uh, this is just the variety of Borel subgroups that, that contain G. So this is the set of um, uh, points in, in G mod B. So X B in G mod B, uh, such that um, G belongs to the to to, to this Borel subgroup, X B X inverse. Okay, and um, let's see. Uh, there's a couple more bits of notation. Curly U is the is the set of uh, unipotent elements in G. And um, here's a, here's the observation, um, which. Sort of suggests that the, the the kind of things I'm I'm gonna tell you about are you know um, merit look, looking at, and this is an observation that that um, probably uh, anyone could have made around I don't know 1900, um, and the, the observation is is this. So well, it has to be after um, you know uh, Jordan canonical form for matrices. And the classification of uh, irreducible representations of the symmetric group. So, so unipotent classes 
in, in GLN, um, well, w w what are they? Uh, so something you learn in, in, uh, in a first course in linear algebra is that um, uh, any unipotent matrix, unipotent, maybe I should have said this, uh, unipotent uh, in GLN, of course, just means that all, all the eigenvalues are one. Um, so, uh, so any such matrix uh, is conjugate to, to one that, that you, you, you write in this Jordan block form. And the, the entries along the diagonal, well, if it's unipotent, they have to be all one. So um, the conjugacy class of such a matrix is just um, determined by, by, by the sizes of the Jordan blocks. So when you write down the list of those sizes, you, you, you get a partition of n. Um, so there's a, there's a bijection here, and the map is um, uh, the uh, 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 a map the, the map is that a class goes to the the, the sizes of, uh, of of the Jordan blocks, and um, and then the, the 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 other observation, which I mean I already kind of said it, is that the the, the irreducible representations of uh, of the symmetric group, which is of course the the, the, the vial group of of GLN, um, these are also uh, in, in bijection with, with, with partitions of n. Um, so uh, it'd be nice to have this be something more than, than just a combinatorial coincidence. Um, it, it, I mean, the kind of thing one wants is some connection between, between the left side and the right side that doesn't force you to go through the, the, the middle where you sort of compute both, both sides independently. And um, this is what um, Springer understood how to do. So in, uh, in, in 1976, um, Springer uh, discovered, well, what he discovered was a way to make the vial group um, act on the cohomology of uh, of Springer fibers of, uh, of unipotent, well, they act on the cohomology of, of uh, well, of all Springer fibers, but, but the unipotent ones are, are the ones we're interested in. So they act on the cohomology of Springer fibers of, 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 um, of unipotent elements. Um, so here, U is an element of curly U. And um, this is pretty non-trivial. Uh, I mean, of course, one way you might get a group to act on the cohomology of a variety is if the group acts on the variety itself. And that's not what's going on here. W doesn't act on Springer fibers in, in any interesting way. Um, so, um, well, l l let me fill in the, the, the rest of this, how, how you get to some statement like that observation up there. Um, so, so it acts on, on, on all these cohomology groups. And if you look at just the, the ones in the top degree, um, so, um, so among the... Uh, the H top B U Cs. So you know, for, for each separate U, I mean, these, these BUs are, are varying dimensions. So for each one, you know, w w whatever dimension it is, you put twice that number in this uh, superscript, and, and that's the, the, the top degree. So among all of those, um, each, each irreducible W representation um, occurs uh, for a unique uh, U up, up to conjugacy. Um, so, so that means that um, you, 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 you get a map from irreducible representations of W uh, to, to the set of unipotent classes. Um, for for GLN, I, I could basically stop the talk here. Um, this map is the is the bijection, which is sort of the the, the composition of the bijections on the top board, um, and well, I mean it, it, it tells you. It, I mean it give, it constructs that bijection w without you having to know in advance uh, what either of these sets are. But for other groups, um, this isn't so great. I, I mean this map is neither injective nor surjective in, in general, and um, well. I mean, we, we want to understand it, it, its structure a, a, a bit more. And so 
Um, so one thing we're going to do is uh, uh, we'll, we'll see more of this later on. So, so uh, one thing we're going to do is en enrich this uh, this target side. Um, Uh, with, uh, with 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 information about um, about uh, well something more to do with the topology of unipotent classes. So so one thing that that you uh, can can bring into this picture is um, is the action of something ca ca called the A group. So A G of U um, is uh, well it means it it, it it's the it's the component group of the of the centralizer of the element. So C G of U is the centralizer uh, in G of U, and then mod out by the, the connected component of that. Okay. Um, so before we 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 talk about that, I, I want to do a bit of warm up. Um, so the um, the the warm up is the is the the easiest Springer fiber, which is the one where G is the, the identity element. Um, actually, actually, that's not the easiest one. I guess if, if G is a, is a regular unipotent element, then the Springer fiber is a point. So that, that's the easiest one. But this is the, the, the second easiest case. Um, so, uh, so, so, e, so E is the identity element. And so of course, the, the Springer fiber of E is the, is the full flag variety. Um, so, um, probably all of you know about how the vial group acts on, on the cohomology of, of the full flag variety, uh, but I'll, I'll just review that. And uh, you know, already in this example, um, it's, it's hard to see it if you just think in terms of, of the space being G mod B. Um, but there's a trick. Um, and the trick goes like this. So, so the first step is you notice that instead of looking at G mod B, if you look at G mod T, well, um, this map induces a well. Its, uh, it's uh, fibers are contractible, th and this map in, in induces a, uh, an isomorphism in cohomology. Um, and uh, well, G mod T, um, you can get the Weil group to act on that because the Weil group acts on the space. So. Uh, the, the vial group, well, remember that that's that's the, the normalizer of the torus mod the torus. So this this group can can um, can multiply on on the right here, and 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 you, you, you get something that, that's well defined. So this acts on uh, G mod T by by multiplication uh, on on the right, um, and. Um, Maybe let's review a little bit what what, what the action is. Um, so, um, the uh, the the statement I'm going to tell you is a is a um, theorem of Borel from the fifties. Um, so, uh, so let V be the uh, reflection representation of W. So, in other words, it's you know it's representation on the the Cartan subalgebra, uh, or whatever, um, and let S of V be the uh, symmetric algebra on V, and then um, and then let coinv uh, coinv W. Um, so that that stands for the co the, the coinvariant algebra. So the coinvariant algebra is defined to be the the quotient of the symmetric algebra. By the ideal where um, you take well, so this, the symmetric algebra, of course, is graded in, in, in the obvious way where you, you put v in degree. Well, you could, uh, well, I mean, uh, maybe it, it's better to grade it slightly non obviously where you put v in degree two, and, and, and this lives in even degrees. But anyway, what I want to do is take w invariance in here, but not all of them. I want to take homogeneous w invariance of positive degree, of strictly positive degree, so not constants. Um, so, um, and um, then when you mod out by this ideal, what's left over is finite dimensional. In fact, its, it's total dimension is the same as the, the order of W. 
uh, and it's graded, and, and the theorem um, is that uh, is that in this action that's that's on the the upper board there, the the W representation you get on the cohomology of, of the the flag variety is the covariant algebra. Okay. Um, all right. So. Uh, um, so basically, all other Springer fibers are harder, um, and uh, and it's not really sort of a feasible thing to um, s sit around and, and come up with constructions like this one by one for each each unipotent element. Um, so we need to do something. A bit fancier. Um, so, uh, so here's the the here's some ingredients in and in, in what we're gonna use to do that. So, um, so I'm gonna define something new called G tilde, and G tilde is the is the set of pairs. Um, in uh, G cross the, the, the flag variety, um, where you require that um, uh, this this Borel here, the, I mean the point in the flag variety labeled by X, belong to the Springer fiber over over G. So, um, so so that's the definition of G tilde, and so of course uh, there's a. Uh, um, there's an obvious map to, to G where you just forget the Borel part, and um, sort of by by definition, um, uh, pi inverse of, of any element is is the is the Springer fiber over it. So um, so here's uh, here's the main diagram. Um, That sort of uh, tells you how all the all, all, all the ideas in, in the talk are, are related. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a variation on this diagram. I'm gonna have a, like a slightly more complicated version of, of the diagram. I'm just gonna I'm about to draw tomorrow, and then maybe two different versions tomorrow, and we'll see it again on Friday. Um, but oh, l oh, actually, let me add a bit of notation here. So. So u tilde is um, is just uh, pi inverse of u. Okay. Um, so so um, uh, there's a well there's a part of the uh, diagram that, that I haven't shown you yet, um, which is going to go on the on the right side. But um, the 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 left part of the diagram looks like this. So um, so both of these squares are, are Cartesian, and the the sort of problem that's been on the board for for ten minutes or so is um, um, producing a W action on uh, on the cohomology of the Springer fiber, and um, so the uh, the the first thing we could do to to, to get this started. Um, is, uh, is is this? Um, so so uh, s step zero is just uh, th this is a this is a trivial step, but but let's just note that if I take the constant sheaf on G tilde and push it forward along pi, well. Um, you know, uh, because these 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 squares are Cartesian, that's the same as pulling back the constant sheaf here and pushing forward along this map. And when you push forward the constant sheaf from here to a point, that's the same as computing cohomology. So, um, so, so, if I push forward the constant sheaf along pi, and then restrict to the point u, that that's the cohomology of the Springer fiber. So. So the plan 
has two parts. Um, so step one of the plan is instead of making W act on the whole cohomology of the Springer fiber, let's make it act on this object, this, this uh, derived push forward of, of the constant sheaf. So let's get W to act on, uh, uh, on this. And step two of the plan, step two of the plan is, uh, is a bit more sophisticated. I, I, I drew in this, this uh, intermediate column, and in the end, this is going to sort of um, play a bigger conceptual role than the, the leftmost column. Uh, step two is, is, uh, is uh, figure out what happens, not when you restrict all the way down to a point, but when you restrict to the whole unipotent variety. So decompose this thing restricted to, to you. So, um, so anyway, well, so let's, let's, let's start on this plan. Um, so lemma, lemma one. Um, Lemma one is, uh, I mean, well, several of the lemmas are along the way are, are, are pretty easy. Um, lemma one is, is, is going to be the thing which um, sort of takes the place of, of that trick in the warm up. Um, lemma one says, don't look at any of the spaces over there. Let's look, let's look at a, a slightly different set. So let GRS um, be the set of uh, uh, regular semi simple elements in G. And um, uh, and and let uh, G GRS tilde be be its its premage under under pi. So so GRS tilde. So I can I can I can go ahead and add a bit here. So GRS uh, is the set of regular semi simple elements here, and that's an, that's an open set. And GRS tilde goes up here. And then the statement of the lemma is this. Uh, GRS tilde is isomorphic to the to the following variety. It's isomorphic to the set of pairs G X T in G cross G mod T, such that. Um, well, I mean the definition is just like up, up, up there. I, I, I want uh, X inverse uh, uh, G X to to belong to T. So so T is the I, I guess I didn't actually write anywhere on the board that, that T is the maximal torus, but anyway, uh, we use T already. Um, so this is a, a you, I mean, you can, you can sit down and, and prove this for yourself as, as an exercise in, in a few minutes. Um, and well, uh, something really nice is going on here. This is a description of a piece of, of G tilde where we got rid of the Borel and replaced it by a torus. And that's exactly what, what happened in that trick over there. So now, uh, you can see how to make W act on this set. Maybe not on all of G tilde, but, but at least on G tilde RS, you, you can make W act. And um, and um, so here's lemma two. So, um, well, uh, the, I mean, th this isn't part of the lemma. This is just an observation that, that the W acts on, on G tilde RS. The, the lemma is that when you restrict pi to, to G tilde RS, um, uh, the, the lemma is that this is a, this is a Galois covering map. Um, and and th this vial group is the, the full group of, uh, of, uh, of deck transformations. So a corollary of that, um, to put this in concrete terms, by the way, um, so if you, if you want to think about what, what's going on in GLN, um, the set of regular semi-simple elements means uh, matrices with distinct eigenvalues, and um, the uh, the well the flag variety of course well it's it's called the flag variety because for GLN it's it's the space of flags. So um, so the statement here is something like well if you take a matrix with distinct eigenvalues, you can find um, well I mean there are exactly uh, as many um, exactly as many flags determined by that element as uh, 
um, as the number of elements in the symmetric group, and the action of the symmetric group is, uh, is, is transitive. So, um, okay, so, so that's something that you can, you can do very concretely for, for GLN. And then uh, a corollary of this is um, let L be, um, let, let's, let's do the same thing we were doing at, at, uh, at the top of that board. Let's push forward the constant chief along here, but restrict on the other side of this diagram over to GRS. So, uh, um, so in other words, you're pushing forward this, this constant chief along a, a Galois covering map. Um, so then L is, uh, is, the, is the local system uh, corresponding to the regular representation of W. Um, so in particular, um, the, maybe the most important part of this corollary is that uh, the, the endomorphism ring of L, so, so L lives over here, um, is, 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 uh, is this group ring. Okay, um, so let's, let's keep going. Um, the, uh, the, the next statement, um, the next statement, um, might be the, 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 the part of this that, that sort of, uh, takes the most work. Um, so there, there are two parts to, to this. Um, so the, the, the next statement, um, well, it, 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 it tells you that the, the objects we're getting on, on the, the bottom row of this diagram are actually perverse sheaves. So, so there are two statements. So A is that um, uh, when, you, you, when you look at the push forward on, on all of G, well, you have to shift it a bit to make it a perverse sheaf. But, so when you sh shift it by the dimension of G, uh, it's perverse. But it's even better than perverse. Um, it's, uh, it, it's not just any perverse sheaf, it's, it's a perverse sheaf that um, arises for, by intermediate extension of, of the thing you have on the regular semi-simple set. Um, so let me label this map J. Um, so in fact, uh, this is uh, equal to J shriek star of uh, L with, with that same shift. And part B, it's a, it's a similar looking statement, um, but it doesn't have the second part. So, so part B says that um, uh, when you take this, uh, this push forward and shift by the dimension of U and restrict to U, uh, this is a, a, a perverse sheaf on, on U. Um, so, What's involved in the proof of this? Um, well, what, what, what does it mean for, for a, a complex of sheaves to be perverse? It's, uh, it, it's basically bounds on, on the, the um, degrees in which um, the, the cohomology of something vanishes. Um, so if, if you want to prove that something is perverse, you need, to, you need to be able to take its stocks and know that they, they vanish above some degree. And then you, you need to be able to do the same thing for, um, for, for its co-stocks, for its shriek pullbacks to, to, to a point. And um, the, way you can, the, the way you might um, prove that some kind of bound like that vanishes, uh, 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 some kind of bound like that holds is if you can bound the dimensions of, of, the, of the fibers uh, uh, on, the, on the upper of that diagram. So, um, so basically, so, so perverse sheaves are, are characterized by um, by some, uh, by some cohomology vanishing bounds. Um, and what you do is you prove that those bounds hold, um, by, uh, by, by, by bounding, uh, uh, the, the dimensions of Springer fibers. 
So we need to bound all of them, not just the unipotent ones. Um, um, so there, there are two parts of this theorem. Basically, I mean, if, you know, if this is familiar to you, then, then everything I've said in the past three minutes is, is kind of clear. But, but if it's not, then oh, th th what you need to know about this is that there, there are some bounds that, that characterize all perverse sheaves, but intermediate extensions are characterized by, by uh, kind of stricter bounds. And so there, there are two kinds of inequalities you have to prove. Um, and and those, are, those are not at all trivial, um, but, uh, but that, that's what this comes down to. Um, so, um, by the way, before I, before I go on, um, um, maybe here's a little bit of a philosophical in interlude. Um, the, I, I mean, um, there's a, there are a lot of bits of Springer theory that are kind of uh, um, reminiscent of, of things we've been hearing in, in, in other talks. And um, there's, a, there's a quite strong analogy, and in, in, to some extent it can be made precise, um, that um, if, uh, you, you know, in, in many of the other talks we've heard about things like the Galois side and the, and the automorphic side, um, th those are present in, in this picture. And this side is, is the Galois side. Um, well, th th it's, it's kind of manifest. I mean, I, I told you it's a Galois covering map. What, what's, uh, what, what's maybe a bit subtler is that, is that this side um, behaves like the automorphic side. Um, um, if you, oh, if you, if you want the Langlands dual group, I mean, this is kind of, this is a little bit silly. Um, but, uh, um, well, the Weil group of, a, of, a, of G and of G check are, are canonically identified. So um, maybe you should uh, secretly be thinking in your mind throughout the talk that it's the Weil group of G check that's, that's doing the acting on, on things. Um, but, but, <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, I mean, with Springer theory, um, I, I mean, um, there are a lot of things that, that sort of, um, you know, ha have analogies to, to things that, that, uh, that we've seen or will see in other talks. Oh, yeah, there's another thing I should mention. Th this map, the, the restriction of pi to the unipotent variety, this is called the Springer resolution. And um, uh, I think, um, it, well, uh, it, the, the, the geometry of this map I'm going to discuss some aspects of the geometry of this map, but I think other aspects of it are really uh, central to the things that Nick Proudfoot is, is going to talk about. Um, so, uh, OK. Um, all right, so, so, OK. Oh, this was, I forgot to write four. This is theorem four. OK. Um, Okay, um, so so a corollary of uh, of four, I mean, especially four a, um, well, the intermediate extension functor is fully faithful. So um, uh, we already computed the endomorphism ring of this local system on the regular semi-simple set in G. So that means that um, uh, well, I guess. It's a corollary of 4a and, and 3 together. Um, it's a, the, the endomorphism ring of this full push forward uh, is, uh, is, the, is the group ring of w. And um, so this is, a, this is an object that lives on g. Um, so if you restrict to u, Well, um, of course, well, rest the restriction operation will give you a map of endomorphism rings, so, so you get a map um, from CW to the endomorphism ring of, uh, of, uh, uh, of this thing. And um, let, let me give that a name. So, so let A be uh, 
Uh, well, actually, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shift it so that it's perverse and, and, and then give it a, a name. So, so, um, so I'm going to restrict it to the unipotent variety and, and shift by, by the dimension of u. And remember that, that 4b says that, that this is a perverse sheaf. And this has a name. It's, um, it's the Springer sheaf. Um, all right, so so here's theorem theorem five, um, and this is this is due to to Borho McPherson. Um, th this theorem is that is that this restriction map is an isomorphism. Uh, so j just to restate that, I mean it's. It's the exact same statement. It says that the, the endomorphism ring of the Springer sheaf is the group ring of the vial group. And the, the proof, um, I, I, I won't say much about the proof, but, but uh, to do the proof, uh, I mean, to, to prove the statement, the, the main trick they use is, um, so we've already restricted from G to U. They restrict even more to a specific Springer fiber, namely the, the easiest one that we already studied, the, the one over the identity element. And over the identity element, well, Borel's theorem from 1953 tells us what the W action is, and uh, and the fact that you already know that action is enough to to um, it, well that that tells you that, that that this map is 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 injective, and then um, you can do a different argument to um, to check that both sides have to have the same dimension, so so it's surjective as well. <coughs> um, so. So the, the the key point is to restrict further uh, to 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 the the Springer fiber over the identity element, and and use the use use the warm up. Okay, um, so so now uh, let's uh, let's see what this gets us. Um, so the. We've heard the, the, the decomposition theorem um, mentioned in, in, in a couple of the other talks. Um, so one, one version of it is that if you're pushing forward along a proper map from a smooth variety uh, to something else, and, you, and what you're pushing forward is the constant sheaf, um, then the, the, the output is semi-simple. And semi-simple uh, means a direct sum of simple perverse sheaves. So, so the decomposition theorem uh, implies, well, it applies to, to, to both of these. To, it applies to the, the whole object that lives on G, as well as to the Springer sheaf, which just lives on the unipotent variety. Um, but I want to apply it just on the unipotent variety. So the decomposition theorem implies that, that A is a, is a semi-simple uh, perverse sheaf. Um, so semi-simple means, well, it's a, it's a direct sum of Simple perverse sheaves, and well, how, how do you name simple perverse sheaves? Simple perverse sheaves are these uh, intersection cohomology complexes. So you have to name uh, a unipotent class and a local system uh, on on that unipotent class. So so this is a a, a unipotent class and uh, and an irreducible local system. But I, I mean, of course. Uh, uh, an individual simple perverse sheaf might occur with some multiplicity, or maybe not at all. So I could write an integer up here to, to show some multiplicity. But instead of writing an integer, I'm going to sort of encode the multiplicity in, 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 in a vector space. I'm going to tensor this with a vector space. So this is uh, the, 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 the multiplicity vector space. And this, this thing can be 0. I mean, not all of them, m maybe not all of them will occur. Um, but separately, this uh, theorem of Borho McPherson, so theorem five, tells us something quite different about A. Theorem five says, well, so A is a, is a semi simple object in some abelian category. Um, and it's an abelian category where, 
Well, we, we know some things about the simple objects. I mean, the main thing you need to know is that the endomorphism ring of one of these is just scalars. Um, so once you know that much, um, this is maybe a, a, an exercise. Um, knowing that its endomorphism ring is the group ring of the vial group tells you immediately that it decomposes a direct sum. Oh, well, sort of the, the, the way the regular representation of, of, of W decomposes. You've, you've got to pair simple objects with representations of W. Um, uh, and all of these are non-zero, and they're distinct. So when you compare these two descriptions of the Springer sheaf, then, well, you can match up their terms. And uh, and um, and here's what you get. So 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 when you match terms, well, in the first one, some of the things might be might be zero. I mean, some of these VCEs might be zero. But here, none of them are zero. So you, you pick a term here, um, which is labeled by some irreducible representation of W. And you find the corresponding term here. So you take this simple object and find wh which one it is. And that gives you a, a label, which is a, a pair CE. And, uh, and this, is, this is an injective map, um, well, just because these simple objects are distinct. And, and so this is it. This is somehow the, the main goal of today's talk. So this is, th this is the Springer correspondence. Um, um, another way to say it, um, which might be more convenient for what we're going to talk about tomorrow, uh, these, these, these labels C comma E, uh, I mean, well, I already told you that, that these are the, the these are exactly the things which label simple perverse sheaves in 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 this category. So these are the irreducible objects in the category of G equivariant perverse sheaves on on U. Um, so sometimes that, that that's a slightly more convenient language. Um, so um, so maybe it's worth mentioning that um, Springer's work on this was actually before the invention of perverse sheaves. Um, so this is not quite the language in which he, he, he stated it. And also, um, I mean, his construction was, was a little bit different. So I've, I've lied to you a little bit. So, so uh, S Springer produced a map like this, but it, was, uh, it differed from, from the map I've written on the board by, by tensoring by the sign character. Um, and uh, I might say a bit more about that tomorrow. But, um, um, but anyway, this is maybe a. Um, a slightly more modern version of, of the statement. Um, so, so let me say a little bit about about some examples. Um, so, um, for GLN, um, well. For GLN, so these, these local systems, by the way, um, a, a local system is the same as a, as a, as a representation of, of, the, of the A group. I mean, I mean, they're meant to be equivariant local systems. Um, maybe I should have written that up here. So an equivariant local system is, is the same as a representation of, of the A group. And in GLN, the, the centralizer of any unipotent element is connected. Um, so that means that all the, all the AGUs uh, are are trivial, so um, so there are no non-trivial local systems on on unipotent classes. Um, so that means the set of pairs C E is just the set of it's just the set of C's. The 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 E's are all the the, the E's. The only E that's possible is a is a is a is a constant sheaf, or maybe maybe a better way to say it is. Um, and in that case, 
uh, well, um, I mean, this is the observation from the very beginning of the talk. For, for GLN, the Springer correspondence is a bijection. Um, um, so, um, it's more or less the only group for, for which the Springer correspondence is a bijection. So, um, maybe the, the easiest group, which is not an example of GLN, is SL2. And already for SL2, uh, it's false, because if you take U to be the, the, I mean, there are only two unipotent classes. There's the identity element and the class of this. Um, then uh, its centralizer has two components. And so there's a non-trivial local system on it. Um, and well, the, the vial group is the same. I mean, for, for SL2, the vial group is Z mod two, so there are two irreducible representations over here. But this set of triple, this set of pairs has three elements, um, and uh, so the uh, the, um, the the pair where you take the 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 class of this element and the non-trivial local system. This is this is not uh, in the image of the Springer correspondence. Um, so, so uh, tomorrow's talk will be about um, figuring out what to do about this. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So the so the the the, the problem is. Uh, um, explain the missing pairs. Um, so maybe in the maybe in the last few minutes, I'll I'll set up a, a, a bit of notation that, that I need for Wednesday, um, and uh, uh, I mean sorry, today is Wednesday. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a bit of a notation I need for Thursday. Um, so uh, so. So, um, and it'll give you a hint of, of what's coming up. So I want to define two functors. Uh, I want to uh, fix, a, fix a parabolic subgroup. Um, uh, P, and so let's give it a, a Levy decomposition. So capital V is its unipotent radical, and, and L is the Levy factor. Um, and uh, so of course there's, a, there's an inclusion map of P into G called IP, and then there's a projection map uh, from P to L, where we, where we mod out by V, called QP. And um, here are the, the two functors. Um, I want to define. Um, Um, so they're they're going to be called uh, well they're 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 called restriction and, and induction. Um, so restriction, it's called res. Um, so the notation is the superscript is G and the subscript is L contained in P, and it's going to be a functor from uh, the L equivariant derived category of sheaves on L. So L equivariant means, well, L acts on itself by conjugation. Um, and, uh, and, well, it's going to, oh, sorry, the other way around. Uh, it starts on G and goes to L. Um, and, and the definition is, is really easy. It's uh, you, um, you, you pull back along IP and then push forward along QP. Uh, so. Uh, except the push forward along QP is, is the is the shriek kind, and and the pullback along IP is, is the usual kind, and then in, in induction, um, uh, it 
takes a tiny bit more work. Um, so before I, I, I tell you what, what, what the definition is, um, uh, I want to remind you about a, a fact about these equivariant derived categories. There's this basic construction you can do where um, you can uh, change the, the group that's, uh, that you're taking equivariance with respect to if you simultaneously change the variety in, 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 in the right way and you get an equivalent category. So, so the thing is that if, um, uh, if, um, if H is some group that acts on X and H is a subgroup of G, uh, then um, the, the, derived the G equivalent derived category of this space G cross with a superscript H X is equivalent to uh, uh, the H equivariant derived category of X. Sorry, that's kind of on the side there. And this, this by the way, um, th this is not a fiber product. This means you take um, uh, G cross X mod the sort of, uh, well, the, the inside action of H. So it's, you, you mod out by an equivalence relation which looks like this. Um, you, you can move elements of H across the, 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 the comma. So, um, so I want to use some slightly non-standard notation for that equivalence. I'm going to write G cross upper H blank for the functor, which goes from uh, dBHx to dBG of uh, G cross upper Hx. Um, so here's, uh, here's the, the, the definition. Um, Um, so, so induction uh, goes from the, the L equivariant derived category of L to the, the G equivariant derived category of, of, uh, of G. And the, the, the definition is um, first, you, uh, uh, first you pull back along QP so that you get something, on, you get a sheaf on P instead. Um, so, you have to do the, the, the shriek pullback here. Then you do this operation over here. You do G cross P of this. And this, of course, ends up as a, as a, as a sheaf or a complex of sheaves on G cross upper P P. And um, well, from here you can map to G. There's a map called pi, and I'm calling it pi because it's the, the, the one up there, G tilde is actually G cross upper B with B. So this is, this is an example of that. So the last thing is, um, is you do uh, R pi upper, uh, R pi star. And so here's a, here's a sort of trivial exercise. Um, uh, I mean, really an exercise in making sure you, you understand the definitions of, of sheaf functors. Um, the Springer sheaf um, is the induction uh, in the, from, from the torus of the skyscraper sheaf on, uh, on, on the identity element of, uh, of, of the torus. Okay, um, so I think uh, that's probably a good place to stop for today. <laughs>